Hello everyone, I'm Cool Guy. welcome back. Today I want to talk about another Sundial weapon. This time it brings us to the most challenging enemy in Season of Dawn, the EDZ Obelisk. With this Obelisk active, you can get the Energy 450 RPM Lightweight Pulse Rifle, Infinite Paths 8, and have your EDZ as the Obelisk. These are going to be dropped as the final reward from the Sundial. At rank 5, you can get the bounties to complete them for a weapon drop. As you level up your Season Pass and you complete your Obelisk, you can get 3 to 4 Infinite Paths to drop after every Sundial, meanwhile doing 3 or 4 bounties and so on. So on a run, you can get 7 or 8 Going. In this review today, a lot's going to be talked about as far as usage. It's a very good pulse rifle, but it's somewhat held back by its place in the current sandbox. You can make it work well if you set it up correctly, and it performs vastly different with mouse and keyboard versus controller than versus console. So I'm going to go through those comparisons. Its perks, its perk combinations, PvE and PvP usage, overall performance, and just things to look out for. I want to be very hard on this pulse at times, but I think that it's needed. Console players and controller players, I do have recommendations to get this thing feeling really, really nice. You really do have to pay attention and set up your barrels and magazines correctly. And I've found that it's almost make or break with this pulse rifle. Overall, I will say this, it does have some excellent PvE qualities. There's a rare perk combination that I highly suggest that you pick up for PvE. Now for the Crucible, you can do well with it there and have good games, have a good time. But the archetype, the frame doesn't do you any favors at all. I have a full section on that to show you why it can really start struggling in the Crucible. Regardless, we've seen in the past, buffs come, nerfs come. These weapons clearly state that they're going to be gone after the season. Season, so now is the time to pick it up. We saw that last season with a couple of them, specifically at Hortative with Feeding Frenzy Multi-Kill Clip. It's been a workhorse this season, and you can't get it anymore. These are tools in your toolbox for specific jobs, and the Infinite Paths does have a place. If anything, you can see the rolls, watch this review, and you can vault it and hope for a buff. But even right now, it can do fairly decent. The Lightweight Pulse class is few and far. There's not too many of them. The frame states superb handling move faster when this weapon is equipped. There are seven total legendaries in the game at 450 RPM, three of them are randomly rolled. The Kinetic Chattering Bone and Nightshade, and the Infinite Pass is the only energy that's randomly rolled. It has a range of 37, stability of 55, reload of 64, handling of 70, an aim assist stat of 76, and a recoil direction stat of 59. It has the highest aim assist and reload out of all legendary 450 RPM lightweight frames. All the other base stats are fine, none of them are lowest, and most are actually above average. The core of it, the bones of it, are sound. Nothing jumps off is truly negative aside from its recoil direction, but we can fix that. The scope is a locked in 1.7 times zoom. It's somewhat restrictive. The moving particles on it combined with the upper bars of the pulse can sometimes, at certain distances, block out targets. It isn't too bad, there's way worse scopes in the game, but this one is somewhat restrictive at certain distances, and that might bother some of you. The next thing to get into is what is said about most weapons, and this pulse is a perfect example. You hear it from me, from other content creators, mouse and keyboard, you spec out your barrels and magazine options for range, controller and console, you want stability. That phrase is exaggerated on pulse rifles. It's very important with barrels in the magazine. Again, for console players, I do have the suggestion to get the most out of this pulse. Before you even look at the perks, I can't state how important these barrels and magazines are. As far as the importance of range or stability, as far as effective range, I have two pulses right here, and as we go through this section, they're going to be referenced. One of them is a max range roll, full bore, accurized rounds, and a range masterwork at 4 out of 10. The second pulse is max stability, polygonal rifling, steady rounds, and a stability masterwork at 10, both of the extremes. These do 25 to the head. In game, the max range roll hits right at 36 meters for its max 25 damage. Past that point, you start getting fall off. It drops to 24, then 23. The max stability roll here does max damage right at 32 meters. So the difference between a max range roll and a max stability roll is about four meters. That's what you're working with when you start adding on range to this pulse rifle. A pulse shoots a three round burst. They shoot up, the recoil pops up, the bullets fly. There's going to be a starting initial accuracy point where you're shooting, and the third bullet is the end point. When you add stability, it's dropping that third bullet down. It tightens up the overall burst, starting at the top, tightening it vertically. The more stability that you have, the tighter the spread is going to be compacted together. This is the max range roll on console. Full bore, accurized, range masterwork at 4. You see the burst, the recoil, and its highest point at the end of the burst. This one right here is the max stability one, the polygonal steady round stability masterwork. The stability stat is going to be at 86, then you start comparing the recoil versus max range versus max stability. There's a huge difference out of the gate on console with controller, and this is just a single shot, not shooting at its max fire rate. So let's move these two weapons to PC with mouse and keyboard. This is the max range roll, and right after it is going to be the one with max stability. So overall, a lot less recoil, it's way more manageable. So if you do spec out max range to get that 36 meter fall off, you're going to be alright with mouse and keyboard. You can control it. Overall grouping wise, on the left side of the screen is PC with mouse and keyboard, the right side is controller. Keep in mind that with a controller on PC, the field of view helps out your recoil. 
You're gonna have more recoil than a mouse, but you're gonna have less recoil than console with its field of view. And you're seeing why range for mouse and keyboard and stability for controller right here. There's a basic point that the most important thing that you want is to land your shots accurately. So if you go for a max range roll on console, like right here, good luck, because hitting max fire rate, it's all over the place, extremely difficult to control and be precise. And if you set up the infinite pass like this on console or with a controller, you're immediately going to lose interest in it because it's not going to perform well. It won't feel good. Whereas the more stability that you have, there's a night and day difference. And on PC, you're going to be fine with max range. That brings us to the barrels and magazines. I spent a lot of time up until now talking about recoil with the max range and stability because there is going to be a pretty ideal setup for infinite paths. Again, I believe for this particular pulse, it's make or break. Like, there's a night and day difference. It holds a lot of weight for me, and I'm gonna have you be the judge. The barrels of magazine add different things. They add range, stability. Some adjust the recoil direction. Those that change the recoil direction have different stat values, but that doesn't matter because we're only going to be paying attention to how it's working in-game. It has a base recoil direction of 59, so this is the base recoil right now. It pulls very hard to the right. If you had on small bore, polygonal, anything like that, it's gonna act like this. And again, it's going to make you want to shelve this thing, vault it or dismantle it. You don't want this. And as we go on with these, remember, with the mouse, it still does this, but not as extreme, not as exaggerated. So if you take the base recoil and just add on a counterbalance mod, it changes the recoil direction, but it makes it go left this time. But it's a tad bit straighter. At base, if you love your role for PvP, add a counterbalance mod. In PvE, not so much, you're going to be fine. Next, let's talk about Arrowhead Break, changes the recoil direction and gives a bump to its handling. When you add this, it starts pulling to the left, but it's a tad bit straighter, but it still starts pulling. If you have Arrowhead Break, add on the counterbalance mod. It jumps a little, but it's way more vertical. Like, this is pretty much where you want to be. And remember, all this happens on a smaller scale with mouse and keyboard, not as exaggerated. Extended Barrel, it gives range, it reduces handling, but it does change the recoil direction. That's fine. The main strength of these frames is its handling, so if you reduce it a little bit, you're going to be fine. But the same thing's going to happen. It's going to start pulling to the left. The more you fire, the further it trails over there. You add on a counterbalance mod, it becomes way more vertical, more predictable, a lot more usable. Chambered Compensator, it helps your recoil direction, gives a bump to stability. The base recoil goes left, and that's what we've been kind of seeing when you start changing the recoil direction. But when you add on a counterbalance mod, it becomes more vertical, more controllable, and so on. So it matters what you want to do with these barrels. For the magazine, there are nine options. For a PvE pulse, an actual magazine perk is great. Extended mag, appended mag, things of that nature. Otherwise, your main two options are Accurize for range and Steady Rounds for stability. And like I said, I mess with a lot of these. I've used all of them. And I want to stress again, when you get the proper barrel and magazine, it feels like a brand new pulse rifle. Trust me. For mouse and keyboard, a max range roll is going to be fine. But with what we're getting ready to talk about, it's going to feel just a little bit better. If you're out in PvE, the mod chosen is what you want it to be, minor spec, anti-barrier, and so on. For controller, for PvP, I highly recommend that you look out for Chambered Compensator with a Counterbalance mod, and then Accurized Rounds as your magazine, because what this combo does is that you get the Recoil Direction perk with a Counterbalance mod to make the recoil straight. That's what we want out of the gate. And Chambered also gives you a bump to your stability, which is what we want for a controller. Accurize is going to give you that bump to range, so it's kind of the best of both worlds. And what you end up with is a straight shooting pulse rifle with stats that are near uniform. You're leveling it out, you're balancing the stats, and that's important. And this roll right here is going to be a laser with mouse and keyboard with little to no drift or carry with the recoil direction. I feel that this is the top overall combo, but you can go with arrowhead break or extended barrel with a counterbalance mod. The main two things is combining them to make it vertical. You want chambered arrowhead extended with the counterbalance mod. With anything but chambered, you don't get the stability with those. You can add on steady rounds instead of accurize and so on. There's a lot of ways to set it up. I just feel that chambered with the mod and accurize is the best of everything. And later down in the PvP section, it'll make sense why we spent so much time here. Moving on to the perks, this will go a little bit quicker. The first note has demolitionist. Great for a grenade build. Kills regenerate grenade energy, throwing the grenade refreshes your mag. It's top tier. Auto-loading holster. It has use, not too beneficial. It's more of a PvE perk. There are better options for this pulse though. Genesis, it has some use. Breaking in enemy shields reloads the magazine from reserves. This is an energy weapon, so each hit regenerates the ammo from the reserves when matching an arc shield. Moving target, this perk grants a passive plus 5 to the aim assist stat and increased movement speed. Your strafe speed, it does push you over 10 mobility if you're spec'd out for 10. It's a great PvP perk. Threat detector, increased reload stability and handling when enemies are near. Great PvE perk, but there are better options with combos on this pulse rifle. Then we have Grave Robber. Melee kills refreshes the magazine from reserves. It has a place. 
The second perk, we have Swashbuckler, the only true damage dealing perk. For this pulse, it stacks at times five, and you can get to that times five stack immediately if you get a melee kill. Damage is around 30% more than base when you're at a times five stack. Zen Moment, causing damage with this weapon increases its stability. This translates to stability increases with each hit, capping out at 66% more stability after five hits. Not all weapons are created equal with Zen Moment added. You have to have a good base stability because that max 66% more stability that it does give is coming from your base stability with no perks added. So on a pulse rifle, it's a massive buff to them, to their grouping, to get a tighter burst. It's a top tier perk. Dragonfly, precision kills create an elemental explosion. This is a secondary damage dealing perk because it causes damage to surrounding enemies. You can add a dragonfly spec to increase the radius and the damage of dragonfly. Eye of the Storm, the only pulse rifle in the game to have this perk currently. The weapon becomes more accurate and boosts handling as your health gets lower. We aren't worried about the handling part, and that's a little icing on the cake. The main thing is becoming more accurate. And you can see this happening with what I like to call under the hood when you're in hipfire. This is console, again, everything is exaggerated. So with mouse on PC, this is still there, but not so exaggerated. Eye of the Storm has two stages. When we fire our weapons, you see the crosshair bloom out. This is your accuracy cone. This is bloom. Eye of the Storm procs when you're at 50% health. So it's gonna be useful in every single gunfight that you get in. When you trade shots, you're gonna be at least half health. It's gonna start coming into play. When you are at half health, your accuracy cone tightens just like the perk states, meaning the shots from here on out, the best way to describe it is that they're very crispy, they're on point. So on infinite paths, you can see Eye of the Storm doing the same thing, tightening that accuracy cone, reducing the bloom, making it a straight shooter, and overall tightening the accuracy cone. It's very good in PvP. The shots just connect better. And we know that there is a second stage to Eye of the Storm at about 25% health. It tightens the cone even further. A very good perk. We have Shield Disorient. Energy match shield explosions disorient nearby enemies. It's useful with Genesis, but there are better perk combos for this pulse rifle, but it is the only pulse in the game that has this perk. And then finally we have opening shot, improved accuracy and range on the opening shot of attack, and just like I said with the scout rifle, it's never a bad perk. But for these perk combinations on this weapon, I think that there are better combos overall. However, if you do want opening shot on this pulse, it's going to perform great. After all, there are only three pulses in the entire game that have opening shot, and this is one of them. For PvE, a while back we talked about a rare perk combination. It was with Dragonfly Rampage. It's only on the Trust and the Ringing Nail, and the beauty of it is using the secondary damage dealing of Dragonfly to proc its main damage dealing perk, Rampage. Using Dragonfly to proc Rampage. So you can shoot one ad, the explosion from Dragonfly can take out a couple other ads. That Dragonfly explosion procs Rampage, so one shot on one ad can get you immediately to a times three stack of Rampage. And if Dragonfly Rampage ever drops on a 140 or 150 RPM hand, cannon, maybe they can make it a ritual PvE weapon that will automatically become a top 5 PvE weapon. But with this season, another rare perk combo has come up. It's one that I've been kind of looking for and waiting for. And I do believe that this is the main draw to infinite paths. And remember, this does great now and if these ever get a buff, you're going to want the roll. It's going to be Demolitionist Dragonfly. New to the season, be on the lookout for it. There is another and that's the Jack Queen King. It can roll this combination as well. Here's why it's special and to show what's happening with this roll, the idea behind it. And in these clips, I do have on a Dragonfly spec. When you get kills, Demolitionist gives you grenade energy. So you can headshot an enemy, Dragonfly is going to go off. Each enemy that gets downed and caught in that explosion, each proc Demolitionist. Each one grants grenade energy. Working with Demolitionist is great, but Dragonfly is getting you that collateral grenade energy. And if the setting's right, one enemy taking out another group can get you your whole grenade back. We do have the artifacts now. Last season was Oppressive Darkness. This season, the solar grenades causing disruption. So the grenades are always going to be a part of the game. It's a very good PvE combination. And again, it's the first time we've seen it along with the Jack Queen King having it. And this is my top overall, in my opinion, to go for. Now and down the line, it can be put to real good use. Some other PvE roles to look out for when these are together, they're always going to be on my list. Grave Robber and Swashbuckler, because it works perfectly. You melee, it refreshes the magazine. Automatically get a times five stack of Swashbuckler. We have Demo Malicious Swashbuckler. This way you can get a damage dealing perk while also gaining grenade energy. There's also Genesis and Shield Disorient. They work well, you can try it out, but the already mentioned roles have far more utility. And overall for PvE, it performs as expected. Great for mid-tier adds and low-tier adds. The Dragonfly demo roll really shines. As for the higher tier majors, that's when you pull out your Sniper, Shotgun, Linear Fusion. For everything in between though, with the right roll, the Infinite Paths does really well. On to PvP, each role that's getting ready to be talked about can work on any platform, but there are certain combos that benefit more on a certain platform than the other. There isn't a top role because each one does something different. It's gonna be catered to you, to your needs. For console and controller, moving target with Zen Moment. And we went over the value of stability on pulses 
and Zen Moment kind of completes what we're trying to do. And it makes a world of difference. You get the passive aim assist, you get the strafe speed. As you land the shots, the burst gets more stable. Since the burst gets so tight, that combats flinch and overall makes you more accurate. And this frame is very unforgiving. We're gonna talk about that when we get to the damage numbers. You're gonna see why this is one of the better rolls that you can get. For mouse and PC, moving target with Eye of the Storm. Because you're gonna find yourself half health in every single gunfight that you get into. It's always gonna be working. Both of these rolls can work on any platform. Even though Zen Moment can work with PC, when you're using mouse and keyboard, you're gonna benefit more from Eye of the Storm. Same goes, Eye of the Storm is very good on console, but you're probably gonna benefit more from Zen Moment. And rounding it out for all platforms, moving target Swashbuckler, if you're on any shoulder charge titan class, or let's say using bottom tree big knife gunslinger, or maybe even middle tree with the extended melee, and you're getting one hit melee kills or extended range melee kills, you do what you need to do with the subclass and get the automatic times five for Swashbuckler. At times five, it does 33 per bullet, so 99 per burst. It's a two burst at that point. Or maybe you can do bottom tree striker with frontal assault that stacks with Swashbuckler times five. It starts doing 40 per bullet, 120 per burst. The Swashbuckler rolls can work. And even going target to target the second enemy at a times one stack, you're gonna be doing 27 to the head, 17 to the body. And I will bring that up later on in the review. That's an important number, 27 and 17. And lastly, anywhere, you can pair Demolitionist with Swashbucklers in Moment or Eye of the Storm. All of these rolls work. I do put more weight into moving targets, passive aim assist, and movement speed because of this archetype's damage profile. And this pulse, this archetype, adds more to my argument that middle tier archetypes need minor quality of life adjustments. They need minor tweaking, they need micromanaging. All the nerfs and buffs, it's kind of led me to this conclusion. The pulse has got a range nerf. Anywhere from 12.5% to 25% less range. The aggressive burst, they used to hit max damage at 60 meters, now they do it at 45. The rapid fire frames like Horror's Least, they got a big damage buff. They used to hit max damage at 39 meters, now they hit max damage at 34. So the rapid fire frames are now currently in the same ballpark engagement distance. They do 24 to the head, they shoot faster, they're more forgiving. These lightweight frames do 25 to the head, 16 to the body, and it's basically pound for pound, meter for meter, right in the same range as a rapid fire frame. So let's stop and look at these pulses as a whole. The high impacts are a two burst, six critical shots. So if you're 100% accurate, you are rewarded with a 0.67 TTK. The four burst, aggressive frame. There are two bursts, six crit and two body. They have a 0.73. They also, again, have that 45 meter max range. The adaptive frame, like bygones, 2.33 burst. It's a five crit, two body. It's very relaxed at a 0.93. They have a little bit more range than these lightweights and rapid fires, but not as much as an aggressive. The rapid fire, there are three bursts. You need to land seven criticals and two body shots for a 0.8 TTK. And even if you're flinched or you need to fire fourth burst, it's rate of fire and it's damage allows you to be okay in gunfights. And then we have these lightweight frames. You need to land eight criticals for a 0.87. The frame wants you to be 100% accurate with eight headshots. With high impacts, again, if you're 100% accurate, you're rewarded, 0.67 TTK. Out of nine bullets of three bursts, eight have to land as a headshot. It's unrealistic to have to be so precise to achieve one of the slowest TTKs of the pulses. And that's why I spent so much time talking about the barrel in the magazine because you need this thing to shoot straight. It wants you to land eight straight headshots. So if this thing's trailing way to the left or way to the right, you're gonna have a hard time doing that. There can be zero mistakes. The 0.93 bygones is fine because it has more range, it's relaxed, but these do share the same exact space as rapid fire frames. And those rapid fire frames shoot faster, the more forgiving, they combat flinch because of their fire rate. What's really the point of the lightweight frame? Because at range, when you even see drop off, you still have to be 100% accurate, even more so. When you start seeing 20s and 21s, like you're out of that gunfight, you're done. Even something right here, it looks reasonable, a reasonable engagement distance. The 25 that it does is now at 23 because of fall off, and you think that you've landed great shots, but they still walk away. The frame doesn't do you any favors. I said this about precision ARs, I said this about 140 RPM hand cannons. The 150 hand cannons share the same range as the 140s. There are three headshot, the 140s are a three headshot. I'm okay with the range nerf to hand cannons and pulses, but these in-between archetypes really do start needing help. And I believe that should come from ease of use by changing the damage profile. A 140 RPM hand cannon like Ace of Spades and Ostringer should be a two head one body. They should have that ease of use factor, at least in my opinion. Now these lightweight frames, they felt best with a swashbuckler times one at 27 to the head, 17 to the body. This damage profile allows for a six headshot, two body shot. It's still an eight bullet kill. It's still a 0.87, but it's a tad bit more forgiving. And since the range is pushed up so close, it's pretty much within a hand cannon range. And they can peek shot, they can jump, they can do different things. They can flinch your shot, your entire burst off. Having to land eight straight headshots is fairly difficult. So yeah, I believe that having to hit eight straight headshots from this pulse is unrealistic. 
you can do fine with these, but you need to know what you're getting yourself into because out of the gate, you're pretty much better off literally using any other archetype for their ease of use, their lethality, and for some of them, their range, which is odd. Think about this. Luckily, I have a little library here. Check in the vault video I made in 2016. Here's the crazy part. Back then, the fast firing was doing 23 to the head. They do 24 now, so a buff. They were a 0.8 TTK then, they're a 0.8 TTK now. The adaptive frames back then did 30 to the head, 20 to the body. They had a weird burst delay. They had a one second time to kill. In Destiny 2, now they're 31 to the head and 20 to the body. All those changes, it's a 0.93. It's a buff since then. High impacts, 34 to the head, 23 to the body. These got an RPM change later and stayed that way up until Destiny 2. They were a 0.73. Now they're a 0.67, so a buff. You could two burst with them back then. You can two burst with them now. But let's look at the lightweight frame. Here's the crazy part. These lightweight frames back then did 25 to the head, 17 to the body. Now they do 25 to the head, 16 to the body. Back then, the Perdition, the PDX, the Hawksaw were stellar, and they were doing what they're doing right now. 25 to the head. And remember, this is back in a world where hand cannons like Ostringer and Ace of Spades were a one headshot, two body shot. And with this Hawksaw gameplay, you can kind of see why they were so good. It's the stability that Destiny 1 had, even the base ability. As a whole, we have more recoil in Destiny 2 compared to Destiny 1. You, you could add braced frame, you could add hand laid stock, but even without them, they were very stable. But in Destiny 2, like, I don't, I don't know what this is, and it's super tough on the user, but I think those that did play Destiny 1 remember that these pulse rifles shined, and they shined versus way harsher competition. The range and the stability was key. Now, they don't have either of those things. Meanwhile, you do need to be 100% accurate. I don't know what needs to happen to them, but I feel like something should happen to them. The only 450 in the game that is the exception to the rule is Outbreak Perfected, because Outbreak Perfected has that Destiny 1 stability. Now, it also has that hidden perk that we talked about. It's that hybrid under pressure slash Zen moment slash persistence, whatever it has. The more that you shoot it, the more stable it gets. And Outbreak Perfected is a real force in the Crucible. It does great. These lightweight frames, are the only archetype of pulse that I wouldn't take into 5500 comp. I would take literally any other frame but these 450s. So with what I talked about, again, you can do well with them. Don't let that discourage you. You can have fun with them, you can have great games with them, but they ask a ton of you. And more often than not, my personal opinion, seeing the full body of work of other pulses, a rapid fire frame for this range is pretty much the overall better choice in PvP's current sandbox. In conclusion, Infinite Pass has some really good qualities, but it also has some very bad qualities. I went through various examples and roles, and the goal was to kind of see and learn about them. That way you can make a decision that's best for you. I do believe that the main role to go for is PvE-centered, that's Demolitionist Dragonfly. Who knows if or when that combo is ever going to come up again, but you have a chance this season to grab one. It currently is, and will be in the future, an effective role. PvP-wise, Eye of the Storm and Zen Moment are some of your better options, and we went over why. Eye of the Storm is a special perk, it's the only pulse in the game to have it. For Zen Moment, we talked about the barrels in the magazine, getting the actual frame straight to make it shoot straight, because it needs you to land 8 headshots, and that's why Zen Moment works so well. There's a ton of time left in Season of Dawn, and you can get exactly what role that you're looking for, you just gotta keep grinding and farming for it. If anything, you can vault it for a potential buff later on. If you decide to use it in the current PvP sandbox, keep your expectations in check. It's no powerhouse, but that's mostly to do to the frame that it has within the sandbox. The more that others around it are buffed, while the entire Pulse class gets nerfed all around for something like range, the infinite pass 450 RPM lightweight frame fall further and further down the list, being able to compete. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. If you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. I do have new merchandise out. There's a Teespring store down below this video and there's gonna be a link in the description. Let's talk about the infinite paths. What do you think about it? What roles are you liking the most? Thank you for watching and until the next one, I am Cool Guy.